Yeah, I, so I know we brought up the algorithmic bias. Um, it's something that I feel like I hadn't really thought of before, uh, which now I've, I've, I can easily see how it's so impactful and it's um, something that we definitely should be mindful of. Um, could you kind of, I guess, just explain what it is and then maybe uh, if you could give like an example of how there is a bias today or something that is a little more practical that people could better understand of how this is impacting us? Yeah, I mean, algorithmic bias at this point in time is just, it's tucked into so many parts of our lives, right? Like even right now, our rendering on each other's screen, Zoom screens is the result of some algorithm, right? Mm. And and you can imagine that, you know, it, it, Zoom has done a good job with this sort of thing, right? But like, if they had some some way that the rendering of black faces was like jacked up on the screen and and and, and nobody else, right? Everybody mm -hmm. fine. If you're black, you show up and you're pixelated, right? But as ridiculous as that is, you know, we've seen instances where the algorithms that pick up a hand under a faucet are like, oh, there's no hand here because it's a black hand and it was not the algorithm was not trained to recognize black hands, right? and so on and so on and so forth. So um, one of the algorithms that has been the subject of a lot of debate and search uh, is an algorithm called Compass uh, that was implemented, um, I think it's uh, Broward County, Florida, where they have a recidivism risk score. And uh, the, the investigative journalism organization ProPublica audited the decisions that were made by the Compass algorithm. And they looked at it, uh, its performance on several years worth of decisions made about black defendants and several years worth of decisions made about white defendants and uh, demonstrated that this thing was more inaccurate, had a, a different false positive rate where, you know, people were being, you know, thought of as high risk, it, like you were being paid a penalty for being black, but partly tied on to the fact that Compass was trained on judge decision data, right? And so, you know, people are getting scores back and like, you know, with similar records or non-records or whatever, black folks were getting denied bail at a, at a higher rate. And then there's this debate of, well, if you're going to de-bias an algorithm, how do you do it? So a number of computer scientists and statisticians started trying to figure this out, right? And uh, they came to, a, you know, this, this conundrum, which they have multiple statistical definitions of fairness, right? And then if you have a, um, a, a scenario where you affix one definition of fairness, like, okay, we're going to make the false positive rates equal for, for these two groups. Well, then now you've likely made it more inaccurate for one group. <laughs> well, we're going to fix the accuracy. Now there's a differential odds ratio or something, right? And so it's just kind of this almost rock, paper, scissors uh, of, of statistical definitions of bias that you can satisfy that are, are mutually exclusive. Like, how do we fix this? And in a, in a sense, that's where our research comes in just trying to understand which of these uh, are the most um, egregious to people. And does it matter if they read about one group experiencing greater bias of this statistical type? Are they more upset if it's their group or another group? Which of these do people prefer to have themselves subjected to? versus having others subjected to. And uh, I think as we resolve that, then we have better information 
with which to to try to make algorithms more um, fair in society. So that's that's kind of the approach. Yeah, yeah, because it it seems like these algorithms that we're putting out here. I mean, I don't I don't know the extent of what the process is like in creating the algorithm and then putting it into place, but it seems like it just kind of gets thrown out there, and then the the data is actually the actual impact that it's having on people in the real world. And it's not something that is researched or tested prior to. Um, Right. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and it's um, the only way that you could is if you have, well, yeah. And and to some level it would be impossible to know how it's going to perform in society. mm -hmm. Right. But you also know that that you're going to train it on some data. And many times people aren't asking the question of if it's going to differentially impact people, right? And so um, that also ends up being part of the problem. Like, if nobody in the room is like, is this going to impact groups differently? Then you're going to unleash it. And then you're going to find out on the back end that it's uh, uh, impacting groups differently. And, you know, you'll probably find out when it's too late, when there's like a lawsuit or something. Right. So, so, you know, there, there's also a level of it that, that is dealing with, you know, legal risk and they're getting legal, legal risk. But it's also pretty shitty to just, you know, unleash algorithms in the world with no sense of responsibility about the fact that they might differentially impact people, um, which is often what's happening. 